Hello, hello, hello. This is Miss Kalitha's blog, and I'm getting ready to do part two of my blog, so you know how we do it. This part I videotape for my YouTube channel, so please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Alright, so here I go. I'm about to do start recording for the podcast on Spotify. You can uh, find me there at... Um, um, uh, if you look for Miss Kalitha's blog, if you just do a Google search, it'll bring up everything. So, and there's a lot. So, okay, if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let me pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever, through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Okay, for you particular subscribers, I am talking to you, this is a message for you. Um, you have some folks that want you to play the game, don't play the game. They'll be upset, but so what? Let's go. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in to Miss Kalitha's blog today. You will notice that this blog is based on Revelations chapter 19, verse 1. And the way I came across doing this uh, blog post today, what inspired me was His Greatness, Danger, Russell Wilson. Do you know who that is? That's Sierra's husband. Right? So, this morning I got a uh, notification uh, from him on Twitter. And he looks so young. I was looking at the picture and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to follow him. And follow him on Instagram, which I'm doing now. Hit that follow button. Okay, and let's see. So, um, he looks so incredibly young. He shaved his beard off and all of that. And I was just inspired by what he had to say, right? And so, let me go back here. I want to read you what his tweet said. Um... Fear is not for me. Fear is not for you. That's what he tweeted, you know, first thing this morning. And I thought, oh my God, it kind of hit me because I hadn't heard anyone speak about fear lately. I kind of skimmed through a lot of um, <sighs> preachers and stuff yesterday. And they was talking about stuff. But I'm like, what are they talking about? I didn't even get it. It's just right over my head, I, you know, um, you know, I've just been focusing on finishing my classes and stuff like that, and if you are in my network on LinkedIn, you know that I have finished my class on rhetoric and leadership, <laughs> I'm so proud of me, aren't you proud of me, oh my god, and so, um, this was Danger Thoughts, you know, and so he was saying that, uh, oh, God, goodness, and the likes are just going, 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 um, 5,004 likes, and we'll just give him another retreat, retweet, so that takes him to 721 retweets with mine, and the tweet has been quoted 129 times, okay, as somebody saying Niners own you. God owns all. Selah. Mm -hmm. And reply 
I put a link to my book. You know, guys, I have like seven titles. So Situations is the one that I just submitted to this person who said, you know, the Niners own you. Um, replying to Russ. Um, it's just... 16 minus 4, Russell Wilson's all-time record versus the San Francisco 49ers. Um, the Seahawks are releasing former starting cornerback Trey Flowers, source said, a, a move that he recently requested, an experienced corner with four years of starting experience now available. They wanted to put him second string, and that's why he left. Sorry, y'all. I'm so hot. I've been drinking coffee, burning candles, so I'm hot. But okay, listen. Um, mm -mm -mm. okay, so. That's what motivated me this morning, Dangel Russell Wilson, right? So the first thing I thought is when you don't know what else to do, praise God. So what I what the next thought that came to me was um, Revelations 19. And um, what is the choir? Sunday service choir does this song called, um, sun, uh, oh God, I don't want to give y'all the wrong information, but it's on Spotify, right? Revelations 19.1. And so I had to play that song. Oh my God, it's just wonderful, 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 wonderful. And so that's how I ended up doing my blog post on revelations and so all of the pictures that you will see on my blog post are all photos that I have taken except for the last one which shows the grandmother the mother and the daughter uh, that is from the pixels and um, the information is given down there for um, that picture now the other thing I wanted to tell you is um, this weekend when I was working, I came across this church and it is a church. I think it's in like Kent, Washington. It is a Lutheran church, I believe. Um, let's see if I can find it. It's different because something that you will see on, uh, at this church as you're driving by is pray. And they have people out in the parking lot who will pray for you. You just drive up. And so I've gone over there before. And um, because I have a lot of decisions to make. And I don't know which decision to make. But like I said before, when you're at a crossroads, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, Danger Russell Wilson was saying, you know, you said, I'm a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. You want to do positive things. Um, praising God. Hallelujah. 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 Reading God's word. Um, the reader and the hearers of the book of Revelations are blessed. And I love, love, love Revelations 19 because there's three different sections where the heavens are giving glory to God and saying hallelujah. And, <laughs> and then it gives a resolution for all of our problems, the beast and all these people who fell down and worshiped the beast what will happen to them 
and the bottom line is they're going to be destroyed hallelujah hallelujah we don't have to deal with them no more okay and on that alone hallelujah 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 okay so about this church um of course i cannot find it um and of course i did not take any pictures of it myself i should go back over there and um let that be one of the last things I do on my way out of this joint, okay? Um, let me just go here, y'all. All right, so anyway, this is what I want to tell you, okay? If you are following my YouTube channel, or you will see what it is that I am doing. If you don't follow me on YouTube, if you don't subscribe to my channel, please do so. So you can see what it is that I'm doing. <laughs> Only subscribers and viewers of my YouTube channel can see this. Okay. Now, when I went over there to get prayer, I met the author. Okay. And... He just was laughing at me when I was telling him my story um, about how I had to get out of this place because I really want to be in a place where people are nosy and people do care about you and people don't let you self-isolate, you know. And I said I needed to get to a place like that, especially, you know, where I can build real relationships with people instead of these relationships that are based on uh, drugs and drug, drug paraphernalia and drinking and illicit sex, which is what is happening here. Now, this could be happening in other places as well, but it is more prevalent or persistent here. Like, I'll give you an example. In Utah, they have a huge, 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 huge problem with porn right but they also have where you can drive by any park in the summertime in beautiful weather and you will see girls in wedding dresses get look I'm I'm just smiling just thinking about it <laughs> they're in the um, park in their wedding dresses and everything and there's photographers and they're taking their picture I'm saying this is happening every day in Utah at the park in Salt, Salt Lake City um, in the morning time deer actually are in downtown <laughs> Utah so Salt Lake City so you're on your way to work and you're waiting on the trolley and boom there's a deer you know <laughs> and it's looking at you and you're looking at it and it's like what you doing and you're like what you doing <laughs> <laughs> it's the only place I've ever seen that happen, okay? Um, so what I'm saying is every every state has something that is amazing and um, that you will only see there. And the one thing I could say about Washington State, especially Western Washington, Seattle, the one thing that you will see that you won't see any other place and I've never seen it any other place like this is homeless people there are so many homeless people here it is oppressive the, the city is filthy it needs power washing um, if you go there you are going to get fecal matter and all kinds of bio essences from all of the homeless people and just just think about it the urine the spit the uh, uh, fecal matter the you know other bio essences that are you know intercourse related between men because remember m most predominantly the the largest amount of the homeless population here are men they are white men okay and there's no way to get around that 
There is no way to get around that. It is what it is. If you go into downtown Seattle, you are going to see that. That is, it is nowhere else. I have seen what they said about Skid Row and LA and all of that. And there are some shabby parts of Los Angeles, but it's not right next to the federal courthouse. It's not cat a corner from <laughs> City Hall. You understand? Right here in Seattle, it's just all up and through. I mean, it's just, even if you needed to handle your business, you cannot escape being um, being exposed, being exposed to a great negativity okay it's not going to make you feel warm and fuzzy it's not going to make you feel like oh look uh, society as we know it is succeeding it looks and this has been like this for uh, at least 10 years I want to say more than that but I'm, I'm gonna give them some leeway um, it's been like that a long long time they had a place here called the Millionaires Club where homeless people could go and get do day labor. And there would be all of these guys in there, you know, and they could take a shower and they wait for their name to be called. Kind of like a union hall type of situation. Except these were all homeless guys. And they would go out and they would do this different work for the different properties and stuff in, you know, the Seattle area, King County area. But they never seem to be able to um, elevate. You know what I'm saying? They were never able to start their own landscaping business, get their own homes, get a relationship or anything like that. It just seems that they were getting this day labor at the Millionaires Club, which is under a different name now, getting this information for the millionaires club so that they can what buy their meth buy their crack uh buy their weed buy their liquor and then go back to their homeless situation tent or whatever and just get high get drunk then when they need money again go back to the millionaires club and be up in these people's houses as drug addicts as felons as you name it they're in these people's homes doing plumbing, cutting the grass, <laughs> straight up addicts, straight up homeless men who live outside, who pee and do their business and all of that outside because that's what they are doing. That's, that's just what they're doing. And... Um, they were okay with this forever, forever in a day. That's that's how it was going down here, you know. And a lot of them would get arrested and go into prison and blah blah blah, and then they're out on parole and then back on the street, and that's just the way that it was. And you know, you're walking down the sidewalk on your way to the Space Needle, and there's somebody laid out in the street. You know, and you just walk over them and don't say nothing. And nobody calls the police. And it's a human being here. But they don't even do that to dogs here. You cannot just have a dog out and about and people just ignore that there's a stray dog. It, when I go on this, uh, there's this website that you go on in the different neighborhoods. And it's not just in the Seattle area. But you can go on here and people have it on here where they saw a dog walking around the mailbox. And they're like, who is this dog? And take pictures of it and stuff like that. Oh, we got to get this dog back. Look, missing dog. Yesterday he escaped from home. He was scared about lightning bolts. Please, please help me, please. That's in SeaTac, Washington one day ago. Help me find my dog. But your son, your husband, <laughs> your brother. Where is he? I don't know and I don't care. That is very much 
only in Seattle that I've ever seen that. That is the Seattle experience, okay? Um, you can be here and they will let you die. They will let you die because your life is not worth the price, the, the same equivalency as a dog here. So if you have left low self-esteem and you're depressed and you're uh, psycho suicidal, this is the place to go, honey, because they are not going to stop you. They are not going to try to stop you. They're not going to try to help you. There's nobody that can sue on your behalf because the city is negligent about the people that are within its city limits. Nobody is holding Seattle accountable for allowing their loved ones to just die on the streets. You do not even have to provide your ID to get homeless services in Seattle. So they have no record of who it is that they're helping. So they, if you died and they were able to forensically test and see who you were, how are they going to get in touch with your people when they have no information on you at all? Do you think that those people are going to pull up archives or look and try to find your birth certificates so they can run down who your people are? Not when they're just laying you, letting you down the street. Not, not when you could just, they just walk all, all over you in, in search of a Fido who's missing. Hello? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Um... If I go in here and I search anything to do with the homeless, let's just see what happens. And again, this is not just, this app is not just to find out what's going on in Seattle, but just, you know, anything that's on this app, right? But it is something that um, people in Seattle, we do use this. It's not Craigslist related or anything like that. So um, it's called nextdoor.com and you have to be vetted in order to be able to get on it, okay? So this says, this is the most recent thing. There's nothing in the month of October at all, but it says thief broke in. That's really scary. Lock all doors and windows at night. This area is full of drug addicts and homeless people. This is in the Highline neighborhood. Seattle. This one is also Seattle. Benson Hill got our Amazon package stolen minutes before rising, arriving home in broad daylight and we found the open box down the street. Um, this guy and his vehicle don't appear to be a homeless situation. So that this is not a homeless situation. This is a regular resident stealing Amazon packages. Okay. This one says look out for this person this is in Renton so this is just south of Seattle also in September she is a local person who is homeless she does go to the free dinners at the Renton Airport which I didn't even know they do that <laughs> okay uh, Renton Airport area where you can park and observe the planes okay um, Look out for this person. I, I, I think that maybe this person is doing something criminal or hurtful to other people. And that's why they're saying look out for her. Okay. Our truck was broken in this morning. That's Angle Lake. That's close to SeaTac Airport. Um, Hose at the same time and almost like he dropped off. I don't. Uh, homeless people don't do this. Our truck was broken into this morning. Homeless people are kind. This person was on drugs or just a person. <laughs> Listen, you are just simply getting a small sliver of the attitudes and the goings on in the Seattle area. Okay, around homeless, what people are saying about homeless. Um, and this says... Um, This is from someone in my city, August 22nd. Can people stop contributing to this problem? Christopher Larch, so you're mad at homeless people for not having a home? Weird. Okay. <laughs> 
I just need you to understand. I just need you to understand. It, this is this is it. This is the whole kit and caboodle. Okay, I'm gonna read that to you again. This person is responding to someone else who is saying, "Can people stop contributing to this problem? The problem being homelessness." And another person is responding. This is a man responding to a man. <clears throat> so you're mad at homeless people for not having a home. Weird. What does that say to you? <laughs> I know what it says to me, honey. I know what it says to me. It's saying, um, I don't consider this a problem. And I don't think that you should be upset with these people who are homeless not having a home. Because being homeless is not um, um, an issue. I'm thinking I don't know. Oh my God. It's just. I just can't believe that a grown person, a grown adult person would say this. It's just, if I click on it, um, the next one was about 6,000 homeless people. Oh, my God. Okay, so the post has been removed. Okay. So, let me try to go back. Like I said, this app is very much not like Facebook. Okay. And... You know, there's a lot of stuff that's on here, okay? So, let's see. Um, okay, this is what I'm trying to say to you about Seattle. Seattle is a place where if you want, whatever it is that you want to do in the fact of harming yourself, this is the place to do it. Nobody's going to stop you. And if somebody says something about it, there are other people that will gang up on that person to stop them from helping you. Seattle is the physical manifestation of misery loves company. The more people who are suffering, some people are the mo the majority of the people here are all for that they are all for su your suffering they are all for your um hurt your pain the more misery that you have the more they are energized and you have to understand that this is earth and this is where it goes down okay so let me just give you a little bit out of uh, this book, okay? This is by Dennis Dyson, and he is a member of this Lutheran church, and let me tell you about him, okay? About the author. Dennis Dyson is a retired dentist. He was born in Seattle, Washington, and attended dental school at the University of Washington. During the Vietnam War, he spent two years on active duty in the Army stationed in San Francisco at Letterman Army Medical Center, after which he went into private practice in Renton, Washington. Currently, he is enjoying retirement along with his wife, Christy. Together, they have eight children, 12 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. He has been a Sunday school teacher for almost 50 years and facilitates several adult Bible studies. Teaching and reading the Bible is the greatest joy in his life. His wish is that everyone will come to understand how much God loves them and wants them to live forever in his presence. And I met him and his wife. And they were the ones who were praying for people in Kent. Okay. I believe it was in Kent. Don't get me to lie. Okay. His wife's name is Christy. She is an artist. And you can find her at womenpainters.com. Okay. Now, let me just show you this. Oh, he autographed it for me too. That's so awesome. I need to put the date in here though. Okay, so here's the dedication, and, and we kind of touched on this a little bit, because you know, Joseph, and let me remind you, if you're watching me on YouTube, you see what I'm doing? Boom! This is our fifth year anniversary of the Joseph Dwayne Albert Foundation. 
um, please like his page on Facebook and this says um, the dedication is to my grandson Deputy Cooper Dyson who died in the line of duty on December 21st 2019 so that was right before COVID and all of that his car went out of control on a very stormy night as he was rushing to help fellow officers needing assistance. He loved his job of catching bad guys and was a strong Christian whose motto was, Send Me. So please go and get his a copy of his book. You can Google it, Looking for Jesus in the Old Testament by Dennis Dyson, spelled D-Y-S-O-N. And I said that I was going to read this one online, and I'm probably going to do that. Um, what I, what I want to do is create a um, playlist for this book. Okay, so look look out for that. That's going to be coming your way. Um, I may go ahead on and do it today. I may go out to the beach and do it or uh, to the park and do it. It's just a little bit different because it's 50 degrees here with the calling for rain in the forecast. I love to be at the beach <laughs> during a rainstorm because it just kicks up the water and stuff. And you know, I just love all of that. Um, so I may do that and you guys may see a little bit of that on my uh, page. But anyway, you guys, uh oh, I'm in the red on my podcast. Talk to y'all later. Thank you for following my blog. Have a blessed day. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. So that is my podcast. Okay. Part. And so I signed off on that. You can find um, my podcast. It's under uh, Miss Kalitha's blog podcast. So you can just Google that and that will bring it up. And again, like I said, this is my um YouTube channel and this this video that I'm doing now is going to be under Miss Kalitha's blog and um, yeah I think what I'll do is I will start a playlist on my YouTube channel that will be for Mr. Dyson's um, um, the title of his book and then I'll also take a picture of the cover art and put that up there um, yeah and so let me know what you guys think let me let me know if you think I should do something differently or or whatever just let me know your thoughts and I will talk to y'all later okay it is getting uh, late and so I have other stuff to do if you can hear I got the dryer going and the washer going and I got a fold close and I'm in the process of doing some different stuff y'all know what I'm doing okay amen pray for me and I'll talk to y'all soon and I'm praying for you too talk to y'all later bye